Hello there, my name is Mark Cummins and I'm the Head of Product Marketing at Adam Audio. I'm joined today by Anna Tolly, who is the Product Manager for Sound ID Reference from Sonarworks. We're here at Rock Shelter Studios in Segulda in Latvia to talk about our collaboration, to talk about calibrating A-series monitors and to talk about using Sound ID Reference uh, to, as best as possible. So we're going to start with the fundamentals. When should you calibrate your loudspeakers and to what degree is room treatment a substitution? Well at Adam we often joke that the worst thing you can do with a loudspeaker is take it out of the box and have it reproduce music. Once it's out of the box and playing music it will begin to interact with the room. Surfaces such as ceilings, walls and your desk will reflect audio and result in an over-representation of the source audio to, at the listening position while some furniture, such as a couch, may absorb certain audio frequencies and result in an under-representation of audio at the listening position. Um, so yeah, the best thing you can do, I guess, is to begin treating your room. Um, but Anatoly, I guess treating your room is not always entirely possible or to the, to the degree that might be necessary to really remove all reflections. Yeah, uh, first of all, the need for calibration or for doing something with your room uh, comes if you uh, your mixes does not translate mm. well yes. and sound different in different places on the different systems then you might consider to do something about your room and the uh, first thing uh, to do is to try to uh, apply room treatment sure. acoustically uh, but uh, everyone has uh, its own uh, their own constraints and resource limitations and uh, perhaps a landlord limiting and doesn't allow to uh, build up a huge uh, amount of bass traps everywhere. Yeah. So here uh, digital room calibration shines mm -hmm. and brings uh, the best possible price per performance and per improvement possible in this situation. Okay. And uh, every room uh, will benefit from the digital room calibration because even best of the best rooms are not flat, uh, in fact, and uh, in any studio you can find an EQ that uh, does something and uh, pushes that studio to the limit. Okay, so I guess in summary you could say that treating the room is always recommended to try and remove, you know, the most common acoustic issues that have been plaguing, you know, mix engineers for, for decades and I guess always will. It's science after all, it's, it's how audio behaves in space. Um, but once you reach the, the level of treatment that's possible for you, given your budget, given your landlord's constraints, or maybe you have a partner who doesn't wish you to, you know, apply treatment to every surface in your in your living or, or bedroom space, um, the next step is to look at, at calibration. And you rightly say that even in, you know, with an unlimited budget, I guess if you're in a professional context, you're still going to calibrate your loudspeakers to, to iron out those final kind of problematic reflections and responses that will occur naturally. Yes, I believe that uh, that's in a normal situation, studio situation, that's not technically possible to achieve full flat uh, sure. sound. Yeah, unless you work in an anechoic chamber. Yes. But, <laughs> yeah. I don't know many studios in those, in those spaces. Okay, so we've decided that it's necessary to calibrate our loudspeakers. Our budget is limited, we still have problems in, in our room. So let's talk about our partnership and let's talk about calibrating A-series loudspeakers. Um, to do that, you will need to use A-Control, which is Adam Audio's software for the real-time remote control of Adam Audio speakers. It's essentially a, a management software. Um, within A-Control, you'll find three default settings. You'll find the adaptation mode, which is, mirrors directly the backplate and gives you the option to toggle between the, the filters that are found on the backplate of the loudspeaker. You can also toggle between the voicings here. Um, but this is over four bands of, of EQ, so your options are quite limited. Um, moving on, you have advanced mode. It gives you an extra two bands of EQ. You can plug in your frequencies directly. Um, and you also have access to Q and gain settings here. Um, but you need to know what frequencies to dial in. And this, of course, is where Sonarworks excels. Um, and this is our third mode, uh, the Sound ID Reference mode. Here, you have the option to import filters generated with it within Sonarworks. So, Anatoly, I was hoping you could talk us through um, using Sound ID Reference to generate those filters and what exactly is happening under the hood. Yes. So, in order to create a proper uh, filter, um, a Sound ID Reference. Uh, uh, creates an acoustical map of the space around the listener mm -hmm. uh, using uh, microphone tri triangulation and smart averaging, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, similar to uh, 
human hearing, how we perceive the sound, not the uh, microphone device. And then as soon as we are done with the measurement, uh, we in the first place present uh, to the user the uh, measurement result, which is the frequency response, mm -hmm. uh, gain differences, loudness differences between the speakers, and uh, timing differences. Okay. And then as soon as the user loads up these uh, measurement profile into the sound ID reference software, user can fine-tune it mm -hmm. and export to the supported device. Okay, so the, the, the A-series monitors in this case. But what about like linearity and phasing? Um, how does Sound ID Reference handle those issues? In Sound ID Reference, there are uh, three types of filters available. Uh, one of uh, them is minimum phase or zero latency filter, as we call it. Then there's uh, mixed phase and linear phase. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking about the room and the A-series calibration type that we're applying, the room itself applies some sort of random EQ on top of your speaker, original speaker sound. And uh, in most of the cases, these EQs are zero latency type of EQs. Mm -hmm. And when Sound ID Reference creates an anti-filter to compensate for these uh, uh, additional frequency frequencies that uh, the room is uh, bringing to your sound, uh, actually we're improving phase response, okay. even with no intention to do so. So uh, uh, that's why the minimum phase filter is uh, always go-to filter when uh, doing room calibration. Thanks for that, Anatoly. But what about standing waves and first reflections that can't really be corrected digitally? Sure, uh, they cannot. Uh, first, I'll cover the uh, first reflections. Uh, if first reflections, which cannot be corrected without applying a physical acoustical treatment, they will introduce some sort of comb filtering into your audio, which can be compensated slightly with the room correction software anyway. Mm -hmm. Then uh, speaking of uh, standing waves, uh, the uh, microphone uh, sees the world or hears the world differently. And uh, standing waves appear, can appear in the measurement if you do one point measurement, there will be a certain standing wave or no or boost there. When you do another measurement point in another place, another location, another frequency, there might be something different. And as we are doing multiple measurements and mm -hmm. smart averaging them, we're avoiding even to try to compensate for these uh, severe uh, nulls or standing waves. That's why calibration profile doesn't do that. Okay. So SonarWorks won't try to overcompensate for those yes, nulls. Yes, but, but uh, uh, important is to add, it is important to add here that human ear perceives sounds differently. Human ear, human hearing averages the sound and uh, does not perceive these uh, nulls and uh, standing waves as the microphone does. Mm. Uh, that's uh, why the calibration profile and the result that we're aiming to sounds more natural to the human hearing uh, than the attempt to address any possible standing wave uh, to full extent, which is not kind of scientific scientifically correct. For sure. Yes, thank you. That was a thorough overview of, of using Sonarworks and generating those filters. Um, now that we've generated one, we've exported it and we can import it into to A Control and ultimately have it sit on the A Series DSP. So let's talk about the benefits, you know, why you may wish to, to do that uh, versus using, you know, the, the desktop application. And what sticks out for me immediately is the kind of set and forget um, idea of calibrating the loudspeakers once and then leaving it on the loudspeakers DSP. So we have to point out at this at this stage, you no longer need to have the loudspeakers networked, you know, via via Ethernet. Um, the, the calibration will sit on the DSP until it is deactivated. So you can either deactivate it within a control while the speakers are, are networked. And then in real time, you can hear your calibrated source versus your uncalibrated audio. Um, when the speakers are disconnected from the Ethernet on the backplate of the loudspeaker, you can toggle between the EXT, to standard for the ex which stands for the extended functionality of the A-series, um, versus the, the default voicings. Um, but what have I missed there? I guess maybe latency plays a role. Latency, of course. Uh, so if you apply the calibration via DSP, you are saving some uh, latency. Mm. Uh, then additionally, uh, on top of um, kind of CPU, uh, performance improvements, you are 
source independent mm. uh, because you can connect any possible source, uh, not only PC, uh, you can connect uh, synth, uh, turntable, anything that's pure yeah. analog. Yeah. I've, yeah, we have a lot of hardware customers out there who've got wonderful modular setups and uh, yeah, great to see them being able to jam and then benefit from that calibrated audio in the space in which they're, they're working. Um, sometimes we receive questions about the differences between using the standalone version of Sound ID Reference versus using the, the filter in the loudspeakers DSP. Do you think it's audible to hear any sort of difference between the standalone version versus the... the, the I believe it's hardly audible yeah. uh, because uh, the resolution allows to uh, draw or replicate uh, almost the same calibration curve that uh, sits in the software. So it's literally virtually indistinguishable by yeah. human ear. The first time we received the request, I did my best to try and hear the difference and I haven't succeeded. <laughs> Yeah, because the sound idea reference uses excessive resolution, yeah. uh, which is kind of not needed for most of the cases. Yeah. Which covers 100% of uh, possible cases, but uh, it's virtually indistinguishable yeah. from the one we are having in the A series. Yeah, on Adam Audio's side, it's, it's the same picture. I guess it's, it's indistinguishable then at, at that point. Anatoly, one question we sometimes receive is, is it possible to further fine-tune a Sonoworks filter within a control? The use case here might be a customer who really likes our default voicings but wants to use a calibrated version of it. Um, generally, we recommend that they do any fine-tuning within SoundID Reference where a plethora of options are possible. Yes, uh, absolutely. In SoundID Reference, before you export and apply your profile into uh, a series speakers you can fine tune it mm -hmm. and uh, for which we have uh, uh, first of all uh, Dolby mm -hmm. target oh, yeah. which can be chosen on top of the flat one also we have a uh, custom target EQ target where you can apply full-blown parametric EQ on top of the uh, flat profile mm -hmm. and uh, tune your speakers up to your liking and you can achieve any possible voicing with that. Okay, so we've now uploaded our calibration to our A-series monitors. They're sounding really good in the room. Um, we can, it's source independent, we can use our hardware if, if we wish, uh, but there will be cases in which you need to recalibrate the, the, the loudspeakers. Let's say you get a new desk, for example, or another piece of furniture. Could you talk about some other examples when you may wish to recalibrate your A-series monitors? Yes, as uh, usually you calibrate uh, your speakers one, once per setup. As soon as you make significant changes to your listening environment, mm -hmm. uh, such as uh, moving the furniture, um, uh, moving the speakers, moving your uh, sweet spots, listening position, mm -hmm. uh, even kind of a tad, you might consider recalibrating your setup. Absolutely. We generally recommend, you know, A being between calibrated and uncalibrated audio during your workflows. Um, ultimately, people will listen to your audio in less than perfect spaces and definitely through uncalibrated loudspeakers. Um, and yeah, if you begin to notice changes as your room shifts over time, you may feel the need to then sit down and get the microphone out and have some fun listening to those, those sweeps. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching. We're aware that there are many more questions you may have about using A-series monitors together with Sonoworks. So myself and Anatoly will be in the comments below to answer any more questions you might have.